Hello everyone, I am Siddharthan. In this video, let's understand what is meant by a generative adversarial network or a GAN and how this GAN works. And I have recently made a video on how you can train a GAN using TensorFlow and how to generate handwritten images from this trained GAN. So once you are clear with the conceptual aspect of a GAN, you can check that video out. I'll give the link for that video in this video description. You can uh, take a look at that. So let's get started with this video. So this is the definition of a GAN. A generative adversarial network or a GAN is a type of neural network architecture consisting of two main components, the generator and the discriminator. So uh, this is what a GAN means. So it has like two main components. One is generator and the discriminator. And the purpose of, of the generator is to generate images or like any kind of data. So the basic idea behind GANs is to train the generator to generate realistic data samples such as images or text. So this is GANs are used to generate predominantly images, but these can also be used to generate, you know, similar text or also, in, you know, it's also used for generating this music and stuff. So it is used to generate these realistic data samples by learning from a training set, while the discriminator task is to distinguish between real data samples and fake ones generated by the generator. So this is the definition means and let's try to understand this. So we know that a GAN has two parts, one is the generator and the other one is the discriminator. So let's consider image generation use case. So the generator tries to kind of generate images and the discriminator tries to classify whether a particular image is uh, real or not. So when we say a real or a fake image, fake image are nothing but the ones that are generated by the generator. So uh, GAN cannot kind of take a text input and generate an image. So that's not how it works. So we have to actually training, train it on a training set. So let's say that you are working on an image classification use case, but you don't have like enough data for that. So let's say that uh, you want to, you know, build a classification models for cars, but you don't have that data for those car images. So in that case, what we do is, uh, let's say you have like a set of images, but let's say the number is less. So you would use that base data set in order to train your GAN and your GAN can be used to kind of generate those synthetic car images. Like again, if the image is more complex, right? So you can use this GANs to generate those synthetic images. So you have a training set and your GAN is going to generate images that is similar to the training set. So what a discriminator does is it kind of looks at both the images of the ones that are generated by the generator and the images in the training set. So whatever is coming from the training set, so those should be classified as real and the ones that are coming from the generator should be classified as fake. So the generator should kind of improve uh, its performance such that the discriminator at a point shouldn't be able to say whether a real a image is real or not. That means the generator has now, uh, you know, it now has the power to generate images that are very kind of similar to the training set images. So this is how uh, basically a GAN works and this discriminator is nothing but uh, just a binary image classification model that just classifies uh, classify the image as one or zero, real or fake, okay? So this is uh, basically what a GAN does. So here we have this right, well the discriminator task is to distinguish between real data samples and fake ones generated by the generator. So this is how basically a GAN works and uh, that gen both this discriminator and the generated neural network. So uh, these two are basically individual neural networks and these two individual neural networks are trained simultaneously. So I mean they are uh, trained separately but at the same time. So they are trained simultaneously and uh, the discriminator kind of gives this classification right and this feedback flows to the generator saying that uh, you know, still I could kind of say that this is a fake image. So the generator should keep on uh, improving its performance on how it generates the image. So this is how this works. So just giving a summary for this, right? So a GAN has a generator and the discriminator. So the generator tries to generate images and the discriminator tries to find which are the fake images and which are the real images coming from the data set. And this feedback kinds of flows to the generator from the discriminator. And over time during the training process, the generator gets better to the point where the discriminator now can't say whether an image is a real image or a fake image. So this is the entire idea. And as I said, so this is GANs are used for images as well as text. And these can also be used for, uh, you know, things like music generation. So you can check those things out as well. So now let's uh, understand this in a more detailed way, how this works when a GAN is trained and what are all the other components in it. So first, uh, let's say we have a real data set that has like, let's say a bunch of images that you want to train. Right uh, now, the at the end result is that your generator should generate images that are similar to this. 
so we would start with the latent noise so latent noise is nothing but you can consider it as like an array of numbers and this arrays of an array of numbers is passed to the generator the, these are like used as the pixels values and so on and the image is generated so let's say that you are taking an array of 100 values and this is passed to the generator and this builds an image so let's say that you are working with uh, 224 into 224 size images and those are the sizes uh, this real data set contains so you pass an array of uh, let's say 100 values and the generator should build an image of 224 into 224 pixel or uh, size from this base latent noise so usually we kind of take this latent noise array with like a normal distribution so i mean it's not like a uh, you know a standard process but you can always like take this so that's like kind of recommended so you pass this latent noise to this generator and it's going to kind of uh, generate fake samples or fake images and now you have this real images coming from this real data set right now both of these images are fed to the discriminator so when the generator uh, you know generates image for the first time it doesn't know you know how this data set looks like so it, it's going to just generate a random image with some you know with some pixel values so it's not going to mean anything so now the discriminator can clearly say that no these are fake samples and these are like real samples now this uh, discriminator would, would predict or classify the image as a real image or fake image. So all these data sets will be classified as real image and all these fake samples will be classified as fake image. Now you have this real loss and fake loss. So this loss function values are kind of fed to the discriminator as well as the generator. So both these are trained. So the discriminator uh, gets trained to classify an image as a real or fake, uh, you know, in a better way. And the generator also kinds of gets this feedback and it also has this loss function and it goes through an optimization algorithm changes its parameters so that it can generate like images that are close to this so this is the feedback loop that lets the generator know how it should uh, generate the images so as the time goes right so both of these are trained simultaneously as i said so you have a discriminator neural network and a generator neural network and both these undergo a training process separately so you have this generator loss going here and the discriminator loss going here and these both of these are uh, kind of trained simultaneously so you can't uh, you know you actually have to train the discriminator because if you don't train it just if you are training the generator now it won't be good at classifying the images as real or fake. So at the end, we, I mean, want the discriminator, like it shouldn't be able to distinguish, but it should be a powerful network because if it's not powerful, right? If it's not trained well, then no matter what the images the generator is generating, so it's always going to kind of, it won't distinguish. So both the generator as well as the discriminator should be powerful enough. So these are like trained simultaneously. So this is how this works. So you have this latent noise, you pass it to a generator and this generates fake images and you take real samples from the real data set, feed that to the discriminator and this classify this as real or fake as this is a binary classification image model, right? Uh, or again, any type of model, but for let's take image example. And then we feed this discriminator loss, generator loss and, and then a training process goes on, the optimization algorithm runs and it updates the parameter. So once you have a trained model, right? So once you have a trained generator, again, you can just pass like a random Latin noise of let's say 100 values. Now it's going to generate images, but those images will be similar to the real data set that you are seeing because this feedback of how this real data set is, uh, is kind of looking like is passed through this feedback loop of uh, the loss function that the generator gets. So this is how it works. And again, you may think that this is like a very complex thing, but it's actually not. It's like very simple part of just training uh, two neural networks and, and having like a feedback loop that kind of flows through this generator. So I hope everyone is clear uh, uh, until this point. So I would strongly advise you to check out the video on how you can train this uh, model in TensorFlow so that it makes like more sense to you and you can kind of use that code in order to build your own can so that you can generate some images of your choice. So that's it from my side and I'll see you in the next upload. Thanks for watching.